Ambient Grunge version 5 for Blender is now available. In this update, instead of having everything in one node, the Ambient Grunge functionality has been split into a more modular node setup, although there is still a single node setup for people that find that more convenient. What modularizing the nodes does is it makes it easier to extend upon in the future and also just helps to isolate the different layers in case you wanted to modify it for yourself. This time as well, instead of being a single blend file, it's a zip file download which acts as an asset library. So you can extract the folder from the zip file, place that folder somewhere on your computer and then go to edit, preferences, file paths and then you can add an asset library and you want to link the path to that extracted folder. Inside of the folder, you may notice a couple of text files and these basically define the categories. So when you've added an asset library, you should be able to see some pre-made categories. But if you can't, it doesn't matter too much. There's a few assets in there. You can arrange them into any of your asset libraries, however you like. The asset browser system in Blender is quite customizable and it's very handy for dragging things in. But in the assets, you'll notice it's a bunch of node groups and the regular grunge material. So this and the quick grunge node groups are probably your fastest ways to get started. So say I had a new object in the scene, just make a cube, scale that down, apply the scale. If I dragged and applied the grunge material, that would apply. And the grunge material by default, has two versions of the ambient grunge setup. So we've got the modularized version and the quick grunge, and you can just swap between which one's being used by clicking on the material output node. They look slightly different just because of the different mark level values at the moment, but we can slide that back and forth to control the grunge. But likewise, if I make a new material, let's do an icosphere, scale down, apply scale, give it a new material. And let's say I already had a material set up, but I wanted to add some grunge. I could drag in the quick grunge node group. Then what I would do is we'll notice that like the two main input parameters are vector and base color. So if I make a texture coordinate node and use the object input, which is kind of standard practice for procedural materials. And for base color, that can be a color or a texture map, literally like anything you want that would make sense in a color input. So I can drag that in. From here, I can now use the color and normal outputs. So if I plug the color into a principled BSDF, you'll see the grunge applying. There is normal as well, but it only really applies over the areas where there's dirt. And from here, we can start controlling the effect. Parameters might have changed a bit. So the muck range min basically defines what's the minimum starting point for the muck if you imagine there's an AO mask. So it kind of helps you to get more control over the range. The rest of the values are pretty much the same as they used to be as well. The cleanup strength parameter is kind of imagining sweeping up some dirt after the muck's been applied. So if you reduce that, then you'll notice things are more kind of evenly distributed. Again, naturally, it's all kind of AO generated, so ambient occlusion, and adaptive to what's happening in the scene. So if there's any geometry near it, the grunge will apply. Let me just increase the brightness a bit. Now, this should also work in EV, but because because it's dependent on ambient occlusion, it may look different to the cycle's result. It may change if things are animated. Basically, it's been designed for cycles, but you can use it in Eevee. And I'm lagging because Eevee is not a great engine at the moment, but you can use it. It's not really specifically designed for it, but it should be compatible. But as I say, it's mostly been designed for cycles. So as for the modular nodes, they're split into the following. So we've got range builder. This is basically just taking or giving you the parameters to like define the ranges of where things should be placed on the object. We have the grunge mask, and this lets you control the scale of the actual grunge pattern effect. So if you had your own pattern you wanted to try, this would be the place to substitute it. We have the cleanup. So this defines like the sweeping away of muck after the fact. We have build muck. So this is basically taking the masking after cleaning and letting you do the actual control letting the dirt grow around an object. Please note that at level zero, there is some dirt, but you can also force negative values if you wanted. So maybe minus 0 0.5, there's still a tiny bit, minus one, etc. So if you really, really wanted, you can put it back further because zero is just a soft limit you wanted to animate. But because this is going to be applied to objects of any shape with any kind of concavity, if that makes sense, it's hard to know exactly where zero is going to be for every type of object. So just use your own intuition. You can push the values wherever you like. Dust and this is a basic one. Dust basically just like adds an extra layer of like, well, kind of dust around where cavities would be. And some types of objects all look better than others. It actually looks quite good on this one, but it's kind of up to your own discretion how you want to use that. And similarly, a little bit of ambient occlusion just for kind of punching the darkness a little bit more in the objects. Again, looks pretty good on something like this. So again, we go from basic with nothing applied to ambient grunge applied. So if you like the look of this, remember these values, take a look at them. It's entirely up to you how you want to modify it. Then we have edge reduction. So what this does is it just reduces the effect on some of the edges, but we do have variation. So at zero, it's just doing a reduction to all edges equally and adding variation, setting a little bit of variation, but you might not like how it looks. So you can actually increase the scale, mute it with the AO a bit. So there's a slight gradient, modify the strength, etc. So this is another one of those things where it may or may not look good depending on the object. 
object or what else is in your scene, but the ability is there if you want to play with it. And then that's it. So in the future, if I wanted, I may add some modifications to these nodes or make like variations for each of them. So the ambient grunge node is available in both Gumroad and Blender Market. I will leave a link in the description or in the pinned comments. You can go and take a look. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.